With a recovery timeline for a star falling an injury and more, this is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Speaking about the upcoming Clash at the Castle event, which will be held in Glasgow, Scotland, the leader of the Glasgow City Council said, I do appreciate that Clash at the Castle is a really big deal for Glasgow and for wrestling fans across the city of whom I know are more than one in this chamber. It is quite unusual for me to be welcoming an event that is being trailed by one of its key protagonists with the unforgettable line, if you make me go to Glasgow, I'm going to be hiding in a bowl of haggis and I'm going to pop out and break your face. CM Punk. Seriously though, as I understand it, this is the first ever WWE Premium Live event staged in Scotland. It is one of the first in the UK and it sees us join Toronto, Berlin, and Perth, Australia in staging this two-day event. It will be viewed in around 180 countries and I am reliably informed that it is a massive deal for the wrestling fraternity and I have no doubt that those two nights at the Hydra will be quite a big opportunity for Glasgow. Having secured it once again, points to Glasgow standing as an international event city and sheer hard work that goes into ensuring that the event economy remains crucial to our economic reputational success as a city. Staying on the topic of Drew McIntyre, he had this to say in a clip on X. So, management and Adam Pearce think they can silence me. They should already know. I'm Drew McIntyre and I'm very, very good at this. I'm always one step ahead of everybody. Bring me to the show. Try not to put me on TV. Nah, no, I'll force my way on TV. And in the end, I got this platform that's growing. I will weaponize it and I'll say what I want, when I want. There's not a damn thing you can do to stop me. So as I was saying on Raw, it's all falling apart for you, priest. You lost control of your little emo group. You have got people coming for you. You've barely even started with all the extracurricular that comes with being the guy. I'm having to do that for you. This is very much my locker room. Always has been. My turf, where I grew up, and I'm the champion, whether I've got the title right now or not. And it's just a matter of time before I get that title back. He made one good point last week, though. One, it wasn't about getting attacked from behind by that bitch CM Punk. It wasn't about leaving right away. Um, after the match, which you should have done, even though I literally spelled out what I planned to do, looking for your cheap pops. It certainly wasn't about recycling the same joke Seamus made already, getting your ass beat by the one-armed man. <laughs> Again, spinning things, looking for that cheap pop, just like him. No. I gave you the blueprint on how to cash in. And look what happened. You ran with it. You won. So in a way, you know, Drew McIntyre beat Drew McIntyre. It didn't matter who was holding the briefcase because I'm such a leader and honest to my own detriment at times with my advice. But here's the truth. I didn't want you to be Seth. I made that very clear no matter how you want to spin it. Watch the footage back. I hate explaining myself, but society has such short attention spans these days. I literally need to. I wanted to beat the real champion, the man who made the title. So credit where credit is due, just because I think you're spreading yourself way too thin. Again, more advice that might hurt me in the future. You're not the man that Raw needs as champion right now, not the world champion. And it doesn't mean I don't value you. Quite the opposite, in fact. You're a specimen, a beast in the ring, and you've shown you more than belong. And I've got a place for you in my show, right near the top, right up there. Unfortunately, you reached your peak right around the same time Drew McIntyre started to reach his. That's it. All right, see you soon, champ. With WWE planning to return to a country it has not been to since 2019, Ringside News wrote that WWE has undergone multiple changes over the past several years and the growth they have seen in the last two years is nothing short of phenomenal. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that WWE has announced their first Japan tour in five years for this year. WWE has unveiled its highly anticipated return to Japan with a trio of live shows slated for this July, kicking off the series 
series. The inaugural event will light up the Edian Arena in Osaka on Thursday, July 25th. Following this, WWE superstars will grace the Tokyo stage for the first time since 2019, treating fans to back-to-back -back shows at the Ryogoku Arena on Friday, July 26th and Saturday, July 27th. These upcoming events mark WWE's triumph from return to Tokyo after five years and Osaka after six, underscoring the organization's storied history of live shows in Japan dating back to 1994. Enthusiastic fans attending the WWE Super Show Summer Tour can look forward to witnessing their beloved WWE superstars in action. The star-studded lineup includes renowned names such as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, Shinsuke Nakamura, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, EO Sky, the Kabuki Warriors, and more. Talking about talent being built up in the women's division of WWE, Natalia said this to the Wrestling Classic. What we did on Total Divas that was so important is we were able to show people what our personalities were like and build characters. That's what I love about NXT so much. I have to give Shawn Michaels and Matt Bloom and the team there at NXT so much credit. They have a team of writers, coaches, and producers and faculty that work together to basically build talent from the ground up and find something special inside people that they may never have known that they had, but they build characters. I said the other day to Shawn Michaels, I said I can't believe how many women are used on the show, like 18 women are used on the show every week. And not only are they used on the show, they're building characters, they're in storylines, and they're thriving, they're excited, they're challenged, they're motivated, they're driven, they're hungry hungry. You watch them from week to week grow. Even just the growth that I saw in Lola from the first time that I worked with her until this huge underground match that we had. It was so cool because that's what excites me about wrestling is what Shawn Michaels is doing with talent at NXT is helping them grow. He's helping them evolve. He's helping them build characters and stories. When you have characters and you have stories, it's what gets people excited about watching a match. We were able to do promos and we were able to build this match through stories and I just love it. I really admire what Sean has done down there as far as cultivating that and building it. It's so cool, it's well done, and I love it. I can't say enough about how great the women are doing at NXT. It just makes me so proud to be a part of it because I'm even getting into the characters where I walk up to Santino's daughter, Bianca, Ariana Grace. I'll walk up to her and be like, I just love your character. It's so fun. It's so entertaining. And I love what you're doing with Gigi Dolan. And I think Gigi has such a fun vibe about her. And I love JC Jane's heel character. Now she's great on the mic. There's so many girls here that I want to work with. Just seeing them thrive. Another woman that I really want to work with is Lyra. Lyra has been coming down to our dungeon. Months ago, she was coming down and training with us and working with us. She is so talented and so passionate. I want to work with Blair Davenport. I know Blair's on SmackDown, but Kiana James, I love that she had such great training at Flatbacks, and then she really turned it up a notch through all the work in NXT. So I just love seeing the growth. I love seeing how people are developing and evolving, and they're taking their work, and they're building with it. That's what the business is all about, is growing. Mentioning if he contemplated leaving WWE and going to another promotion, Drew McIntyre told PW Insider, It was never a consideration. I'm wrestling with WWE. I don't think in the sense, am I going to go wrestle somewhere else? This is where I want to wrestle. I don't want to be anywhere else, but our family has gone through a lot over the past year. Things in my own family, my wife's sister unfortunately passed a year ago yesterday. That was very difficult, and I felt like I'm going to have to take some serious time for my family. There was a period where I was like, maybe I'm gonna have to take a little break and come back in some uncertainty. Thankfully, as a family, we came together and WWE gave me the time I needed whenever I needed it during that period and in the end, as a family, we came together. We had a conversation about what was best for us. The company was unbelievable with that and thankfully, everybody is in a great place right now.
Going over the crowd not giving Chris Jericho a great reception during the last pay-per-view in AEW, Ringside News wrote that Fightful Select reports that Chris Jericho anticipated the negative crowd response he received during his FTW Championship clash with Hook at the recent AEW Dynasty 2024 pay-per-view event in St. Louis, Missouri. Throughout the match, the St. Louis crowd chanted, please retire and go home, Jericho, go home, and loudly booed when he defeated the cold hearted handsome devil to capture the FTW championship. According to those close to Chris Jericho, the crowd reaction during the FTW championship bout matched almost exactly how he had predicted it to them beforehand. Chris Jericho also required stitches after Hook hit him with the microphone on this past week's episode of AEW Dynamite. Regardless, we'll have to see how their feud will progress as AEW Double or Nothing will be taking place on May 26th, where the two will do battle once again. Sticking with Chris Jericho, this was said on the Fightful Select backstage report regarding the alteration made to the FTW title as it now has a plate that says the learning tree Chris Jericho. One thing that was not expected was the alterations to the FTW title. We are told it was a surprise to many including Taz as that FTW title belt is the original one that was in ECW. With Marigold putting on their inaugural show the other day, their top name, Julia, is now injured. With the company writing on X, Julia's right wrist was injured in yesterday's inaugural match. Today, her doctor examined her and diagnosed her with a fracture. Unfortunately, she will miss the Hanukkah Mora show on the 23rd and upcoming shows for the time being. We apologize and thank you for understanding. Steve Carey of Ringside News added, Julia suffered a fractured wrist at the inaugural Marigold show. Recovery time for athletes for a fractured wrist is three to nine weeks, but could take three or more months depending on the severity of the injury. Julia rumored debut at the July 7th NXT Heat Wave will depend on the severity of the injury. In an update on the lawsuit from WWE against Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, Ringside News said the WWE Royal Rumble premium live event held on January 27th was highly anticipated for its potential surprises and did not disappoint, setting several records. However, controversy followed when WWE filed a lawsuit against Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton to prevent the release of the event's bidding contract. According to WrestleNomics, WWE filed a complaint on February 16th to stop the release of an agreement between WWE and the city of San Antonio. The contract's disclosure could reveal what the city provided to WWE for hosting the Royal Rumble at the Alamo Dome in 2023. WWE claims that the agreement contains proprietary information and qualifies as a trade secret which should exempt it from Texas's public information law. In April 2023, city officials received approval from the state attorney general's office to withhold the bidding contract. However, this decision was reversed on January 17, 2024. Assistant Attorney General Michelle Garza stated in a letter that WWE did not provide sufficient factual evidence to prove that the information is confidential under Texas's public information law. Contracts related to the Royal Rumble 2023 event, including those involving the Alamo Dome, are subject to public records requests because the venue is owned and operated by the city government. As a result, agreements involving a government entity typically fall under public record laws. WWE argues that the bidding contract should be exempt from disclosure under Texas's public information laws, asserting that it contains proprietary information that qualifies as a trade secret. Texas law defines a trade secret broadly covering various forms of business, scientific, 
technical and financial information, regardless of whether it is tangible or intangible or how it is stored. It was then reported that a hearing had been scheduled for May 29th at 9 a.m. According to Brandon Thurston on Twitter, there has been an update in the legal case involving WWE and Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton's office. The Attorney General's office responded to WWE's complaint, which sought to prevent the release of certain information related to the Royal Rumble 2023 event in San Antonio, including details about the site fee paid by the government. The response from the Attorney General's office includes a general denial of all allegations in WWE's petition. The office has asked the judge to declare that the information in question is subject to disclosure under public records laws. Additionally, the Attorney General's office has requested that WWE be held responsible for all court costs associated with the case. Update, Attorney General Ken Paxton's office responded yesterday in this case. The AG office has entered a general denial to all allegations in plaintiff's WWE's petition, which attempts to block from release to WrestleNomics certain information related to the Royal Rumble 2023 event in San Antonio, including information related to the site fee the government paid for the event. The AG asks for the judge to declare the information at issue to be subject to disclosure and that WWE be responsible for all court costs. This hearing will likely determine the outcome of the lawsuit potentially in WWE's favor if a default judgment is granted due to the absence of a timely response from the Texas Attorney General's office. However, given the recent response from the Attorney General's office denying WWE's allegations and requesting disclosure of the information, the case will now proceed with both parties presenting their arguments. Despite being injured and off of NXT programming, Nikita Lyons can be seen taking part in axe throwing. Going over the reaction from those backstage to the return of Sonya Deville on Raw, Ringside News wrote that Sonya Deville suffered an ACL tear after injuring herself on the July 28th episode of SmackDown. Thankfully, she made a return on Raw this week, and in that regard, the backstage reaction to her return has been revealed. On the May 20th episode of Monday Night Raw, Zoe Stark and her partner Shayna Baszler were seen backstage preparing for their segment when Sonya Deville approached them with a proposal. However, Stark and Baszler brushed her off and walked away, leaving Deville standing alone. Fightful Select reports that Sonya Deville was visible backstage throughout the day and not hidden from view. Several sources mentioned that they hadn't expected her to return until midsummer, so they were genuinely surprised to see her back earlier than anticipated. Sonya Deville was backstage throughout the day and not hidden. There were several sources that we spoke Two, who didn't expect her back until midsummer and were pleasantly surprised to see her return. For an update on an AEW pay-per-view, Sean Ross App of Fightful Select reported that AEW plans to imminently announce that they'll be moving this year's AEW All Out off of Labor Day weekend. The event will still take place in Chicago, but will be Saturday, September 7th from the previous date of September 1st. Taking to Instagram, Alba Fire revealed that her mother passed away posting this photo and writing, The world won't be the same without you. Love you, Mom. Of course, we wish her and her family all the best during this time.
When it comes to a bit of controversy surrounding The Rock's daughter and NXT general manager Ava, Ringside News wrote that the Israel-Palestine war has still not taken rest and the lives of thousands are still in danger. With Israel trying to occupy Palestine territories, chaos has entered the fray. Amidst this turmoil, numerous celebrities and superstars have voiced their opinions on the prolonged conflict. WWE NXT manager Ava Rain sent out a story last week on Instagram standing against Israel, promoting a poster that said, End Israel's Illegal Occupation of Palestine. This has sparked significant controversy on the internet, with some fans showing their outrage for the star. Ava's Instagram post did not go unnoticed. Ringside News has learned that there has been considerable backstage buzz in WWE following Ava's post. Many backstage felt that her story was was ill-advised, considering her father's agent having the same background and the company themselves having Jewish ownership. Not only that, but the notion backstage following the incident is that the NX team manager was shielded from her connections and her father's name and that the company didn't have any consequences due to that. Some also believe that the star has attained a position in the company that she doesn't really deserve. Many backstage felt it was ill-advised considering the company's Jewish ownership and her father's agent sharing the same background. There's a prevailing notion backstage that she's shielded from any consequences due to her connections. This suggests she may hold a position within the company that some feel she hasn't earned. While Ava's story initially raised some doubts, the latest backstage update has significantly clarified the situation. Given her position, it's highly unlikely that WWE will take any action against her. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.